so if you missed something today or if you will have to leave uh, in the meantime, uh, don't hesitate. You will receive uh, the recording link as well as the slides that I'm going to be showing to you. Uh, so without further ado, again, welcome. Really pleased to have you here with us. Uh, my name is Adelia, and uh, I will be uh, your presenter today, your host, and I'm joined here by my lovely colleague, uh, colleague uh, Kong, who will be moderating um, the chat and uh, letting the participants in, admitting them as they come. I know it can be tricky sometimes with the time zones and all because we have people from all over the world joining us today, which is very exciting. Now, if you have any questions in the meantime, please don't hesitate to let them uh, let me know. I'll let Kuang know in chat box. Um, he will answer as we go. If there is something uh, he cannot answer, uh, I will be able to stop in midway and um, um, and then answer. And then, if you have anything else, uh, you have always uh, the question and answer session at the end. So, without further ado, let us get started. Now, um, nowadays the world is uh, changing, rapidly changing, and we need to adapt. Now, um, supply chains currently are shifting uh, across the globe, are shifting to new markets. And this is especially important uh, because of uh, the COVID, the pandemic that changed everything and changed the world of trade, especially as well. And also due to the current geopolitical risks and sanctions, um, this is especially important for small firms, uh, micro, small and medium sized enterprises to be able to adapt. So uh, your business has to be ready for that. Um, according to a recent study of last year by Ernst and Young, 53% uh, of companies have established uh, new operations in one or more additional um, countries in different markets or are planning to do so in the next uh, two years. So it is very important to be able to uh, diversify your risk and not to put all your eggs in one basket. And um, for a small firm, it's especially crucial because you, unlike big conglomerates, you have limited resources. So the uh, first step in your journey would probably be a smart way to go about it is to look at all the freely available um, market intelligence sources, which I'm going to cover in the presentation today. So we have you covered with our wonderful world of uh, ITC tools. Now, as you might already be familiar with some of them, if not all of them, uh, we have a lot of maps here at ITC helping you with market analysis. For instance, trade map, something I'm going to cover today uh, that um, shows you trade statistics, export, import uh, statistics, and very detailed level. We are also going to look at the market access map, which uh, helps you to see um, the tariffs and regulations requirements to enter certain market. We will also look at the expert potential map to see uh, the expert potential as a whole. And if you have any untapped or remaining expert potential as an exporter in certain markets. Uh, in ITC here, we also have rules of origin facilitator um, that looks closer in the preferential trade agreements and specificities of certain rules of origin. We also have market price information map, which looks at agri-food prices across uh, different markets, sustainability map uh, that covers all the voluntary standards uh, that are quite trendy now in the um, in the Western world, for example, um, again, these are not obligatory to comply with, but they're very um, appreciated by many uh, importers. We also have procurement map for public procurement, investment map for investment. You got it. It's all in the name. Uh, but today we will focus on the top of three trade map, market access map, expert potential map. And as a bonus, we will look at the global trade help desk that has information from uh, if not all, but many of these maps, and it kind of lets you um, bird, uh, gives you a bird's eye view on the opportunities that you can check with uh, two simple clicks. 
Now we do have user more than 1 million users now from all over the world. And uh, the tools are free for uh, developing countries and also for the users from the European Union, thanks to the European Commission. Uh, however, we do work with also big companies that you can see here on the screen that actually pay for uh, to use our tools. So uh, we are quite useful. Um, now, uh, many of you probably already have registered with us. If not, I strongly encourage you to uh, at any point in time to go to marketanalysis.interest.org and register um, in order to have access to more detailed trained information on trade map, access company information, be able to create your own country groups for analysis and much more. Uh, I will talk about this portal later on, but I do strongly encourage you to register. You do not have to register for all of the tools, but it does give you more um, wiggle room. Now, before we start, now we speak uh, English. I hope you all understand me and I'm really uh, being really clear. But in order to navigate the world of trade, we have to also speak another language, which is the harmonized system uh, or the HS uh, system, uh, I, AKA the language of trade. Now, uh, it goes uh, the following way. Uh, all the products, in order to being able to um, get exported or imported, the customs offices would, would have a, an absolute nightmare uh, trying to navigate uh, these because they, uh, different countries may, may, may uh, label them differently, may categorize them differently. That's why they have established these international standards at up to six digit level code, uh, which means that all of the products will be universal. So you will compare trade uh, statistics indicators without any problem at up to six digit codes. Now it goes the following way. It starts with a chapter. We have around 99 chapters. They get changed from time to time. But uh, here, um, example, we have a T. For example, chapter 09 is coffee, tea, mate, and spices. Then it gets uh, a little bit broader, uh, a little bit narrower um, into the headings level. Uh, we have 0901 for coffee, 0902 for tea, and 0903 for mate. So um, let's look closer in the T. Uh, then it breaks down into the subheading. Uh, so green tea uh, would universally be recognized under the HS code 090210 uh, and black tea would be recognized under 090230 whereas black tea in bigger packages uh, goes under 090240. Now uh, that's where it stops. Huh? Again it's at six digit level universal across all the markets uh, but then all the countries have different specificities, different requirements um, and uh, it goes uh, it breaks down further on onto the national tariff line level. Now uh, then uh, let's look closer into that one. For example here you can see that um, in China, uh, 090210 has two more digits added, again, at the national level. Um, for example, 090210 is a flavored green tea in packages of three kilograms, and 090290 is unflavored green tea in packages of three kilograms. And now every code that ends with a with the zeros at the end, you can disregard the zeros and it will be the same as the first six digits. Uh, for example, here in Japan, we have again, the green tea not fermented in packages um, smaller than three kilograms. And here you can see in the US, uh, as I just mentioned that organic, organic certification has become very trendy. Um, they do pay a lot of attention to that. So they broken down again at the code at the national level to 090 to 1015 um, certified organic green tea and uh, 090 to 1050, uh, that would be anything than the certified organic green tea with the same name that we've seen above. Now, also, you should be wary uh, of the HS revisions. Again, there is so many products and there is so many things we can do with them. Uh, and um, 
Sometimes uh, products get um, new products are invented. Sometimes some products are out of date and some products can be reallocated because of, of the volumes trade. Now, every five years, um, the HS code are being revised. So you can see here the existing revision uh, starts from 96 up until 2022 that we currently use in a trade map. Uh, uh, you can check it also on trademark for yourself for your product that I'm going to actually cover just in a bit. Um, and uh, just bear in mind that for time series, um, we apply the revision that is used for the country for the reporting year. But for trade indicators, we currently use HS 2017 revision. So um, as I just said, uh, if you have any troubles finding any information for your product, uh, you might be looking at the wrong revision. Um, our different tools try to adapt to the new revisions, but depending on the reporting, um, it's um, to, to be on the safe side, it's better to double check it with Trademap. Now you can see here quite um, clearly an example of fresh cherries. So we can see that up to 20, uh, 2012. Uh, fresh cherries came under the HS code 080920. Uh, and then uh, in 2012, they decided to divide it uh, into 080921, uh, fresh sour cherries pronocerasus, and 080929, um, fresh cherries excluding, excluding sour cherries. And from then on, um, the cherries continued to exist in the same manner in the HS revision. Now, let's start our export journey first with a little bit of theory. And I, how I like to start it is to first look at the expert potential map. What is expert potential map? Well, it helps you to identify products, markets, and suppliers with expert potential and find out new products with um, chances of expert success. Now, the key characteristics, so it focuses on opportunities uh, with expert potential in order to be able to diversify your experts, you will see which markets are uh, the most interesting for you and you will see, for example, uh, if you select your uh, country of export, which products have expert potential according to our calculations. Now, I will talk about the calculations briefly. There is a whole methodology about it, and I encourage you strongly to just check the website and uh, check the methodology if you would like. Now, uh, let's first cover the basics, shall we? Um, again, it uses an economic model uh, that draws on all the quantifiable factors such as trade, tariffs, GDP growth, geographical data, and uh, uh, you can um, see the data country specific and also uh, region specific and customize the results um, as you like. It covers over 220 uh, countries and territories and more than 4,000 product groups. Now, again, we are just starting our export journey. Which factors do we want to consider to, ex to estimate the export potential uh, across the markets? is a demand. Probably we want to see if our product is demanded in the market. So if they don't need it, we don't want to allocate our resources into that. Is there any growth in economic performance? Is there any outstanding outliers? What is the distance between the countries? We surely don't want to export our fresh fruits really, really far away um, if they're very easily perishable and it costs us a lot on top of everything. What are the tariffs and preferential margins? Um, what is the strength of trade relationships? We want to see how the, the countries are actually uh, behaving together. Now, worry not, we have the expert potential map. Now, expert potential map is an ITC forecast of five years into the future, okay? It is currently calculated until 2027. And it is looking at the benchmark value of the expected trade. It takes into account, again, all the quantifiable factors, demand, the supply, the GDP growth, the global market share of the products, the tariffs, the distances between the trading partners, um, the market share of the country, uh, 
in a, in a specific market for a specific product and the strength of relationship. So uh, using all that, we can identify and compare opportunities uh, for different products across different markets. And in a nutshell, I'm going to look, I'm going to show you uh, the formula. Now it's quite easy if you don't get into the details, it's demand, supply, and ease of trade. Now it, uh, it all makes expert potential indicator or EPI, how we call it, for the next five years. Now demand will help you answer uh, the question of how much the product will be imported. Uh, will the importer demand? The supply is how much can I actually uh, export? Ease of trade is how easy we can trade with a specific partner. And uh, how much, uh, this will show you how much can we export. Now, it's consisting of the actual exports. Again, how much is all actually exported? We don't want to start exporting something uh, that's not being traded at all, probably. And uh, unrealized export potential. How much can the exports grow? Now, what is the export potential indicator in more detail? Now, again, as supply is looking at the market share, expected growth of supply and global tariff indicators, uh, conditions. Demand is looking at the imports, expected growth of demand and tariff conditions and sensitivity to the distance. And ease of trade is the bilateral trade um, relationships between the two countries. Are they close to each other? Uh, do they maybe speak the same language? Um, are there any uh, agreements uh, established already that will uh, help you um, navigate the market? Now, how does the unrealized potential, uh, how is it being calculated? Now, if uh, expert potential indicator is surpassing the export, uh, the unrealized potential is equal to expert performance indicators minus current imports. And if it is less or equal to the current exports, uh, we uh, count it as zero. Now, why would there be an unrealized expert potential? So it might be due to several things. For example, uh, expected supply and demand growth. Uh, which is growth-based, and other factors that are friction-based, for example, non-tariff measures affecting this particular exporter and uh, products. Again, in the formula of calculating the export potential, we take only quantifiable factors and um, uh, factors such as non-tariff measures, or we call them um, burdensome regulatory requirements that sometimes can be even more, um, even harder to comply with than really, really high tariffs, for example, uh, that can be very costly for companies. That unfortunately is not um, calculated in the formula. So um, bear that in mind as well. And then there could be um, a reason in price and quality positioning or lack of market intelligence or business contacts and any other factor, which actually leaves us room, um, uh, which leaves uh, trade advisors extra room for action. Oop. And uh, one last thing, I know I've given you a lot of theory, uh, but this is just an important bit to keep. But bear in mind, um, in the expert potential map, many products are being categorized. So you will see on top of just the, the traditional six digit HS code that I've showed you before, you will also see some products being um, grouped. Uh, so for example, here you can see um, there has been a um, product code for salmon and it's been split in several groups, so uh, in different divisions. And because expert potential map is um, a five year uh, benchmark value of the expected trade in order to um, uh, fix the, um, how to say, in order to be on the safe side with the product uh, code, uh, they have been grouped. So now it would come in 0302 XA. So don't be scared if you see the X's and letters on top of the numbers. It's there for a reason. And also bear in mind that some products are not uh, included in the export potential calculations, such as um, waste, pollutants, arms, ammunition, tobacco, and uh, antiques, for example, something that's not commonly traded is also 
excluded. All right, now, without further ado, let's uh, go live. And let me actually show you what I've been talking about for so long. I hope you can still see my screen. Huon, can you please confirm that everything is fine? Yeah, everything's fine. Um, yes, we can see your screen. You're showing the website, right? Yes, thank Perfect. you so much. Um, all right, now this is the expert potential map. Let me quickly guide you through that. Now on top of the screen, you have the home page, which will bring you back to this wonderful page. Here we have the product step to analyze the products that you might want to consider as an exporter. Here we have market step. So in case you already have your products, you can click here and analyze the markets. And here you have exporters. For example, if you're a business support officer, uh, you might also want to see what are the exporters globally. Uh, now, the, this website is available in three languages, English, French, and Spanish. And here, as in all of our platforms, we have an about page that you can read if you'd like. And we have resources. If you don't know where the data comes from, you can click on the data sources to study through. You have the correspondence table for uh, those grouped codes with X's and uh, other letters on top of the numbers. You have the glossary, FAQ. Uh, you also have uh, video tutorials if you need more in-depth guidance, publications and link to our, our other tools. Again, if you really want to know more about the methodology, there is nothing better there than the guide on expert methodology that my colleagues have prepared and they've worked really hard on that. So please click on that if you would like to learn more. Now, let's go down the page and see what we can do with the tool. Now here you can search a product or a country. Uh, let us start with selecting just the country. And let me focus this time on India. I want to see what are the most prominent products for India, what products have the most export potential across different markets. Now I click here. And uh, from the top already, it gives us the unrealized expert potential amount overall in the world for all of the products. Now here you can see the total unrealized expert potential uh, for India is 243 billion US dollars. And here you can explore the products and that's what we want to focus on now. Yes. Um, I won't take that much more time. I get the reminders of <laughs> the time limit. Uh, but we took some time in the beginning to uh, get to know the HS uh, and methodology. So already from the top here, you can see all the top products with extra potential. They're all very beautiful and colorful um, um, rectangles. Now, let's see what do they mean. Now, again, uh, every time you work with our tools, make sure you read the name of, um, well, uh, the uh, uh, name of the page, the results that it gives you. So on the left here for expert potential map, you can see that you select India and you have market world as a whole. And here you can see that all the sectors, all the products have been selected. And here you can see they're all color coded. You can remove one. For example, you're not interested in chemicals. You can just remove it or you can add it back as you'd like. And you can also look at, oh, potential map. Sorry, let me just restart the page. Oh, let's wait. I believe in it. I believe in it. Thanks for your patience, guys. All right, we're back. Now you can also select it um, by subsectors. It will show you uh, at the HS4, I believe, level. And uh, you can go back to products. Now, uh, all the big square is showing the total expert potential. So they are the bigger it is, the bigger the expert potential. Now, here you can see the diamonds. Work to diamonds has the biggest expert potential. and um, if you, uh, so the darkest um, part of the uh, rectangle is the already 
realized uh, experts, so the actual experts and the bright part in all of these is the untapped or unrealized expert potential remaining based on our calculations. Uh, now you can also select a gap chart to see it in um, a ranking. That's actually something that I prefer to look at. And um, here you see again diamonds is top one, followed by medicaments. And here you see the HS code with the X and the B, followed by jewelry, uh, semi mild or uh, whole, um, wholly mild milled rice, motor vehicles, etc. Now if you have if you see too many and you want just top five, we can do so by just toggling this little bar here. And here you can see that um, you just see the top five here. Now, um, for the sake of the exercise and uh, to uh, tackle something that's very feasible and very desired by me currently, which is lunch, uh, let's select if agri-food product here. Uh, which is a top four exporter, uh, top four product with the uh, biggest export potential for India here, uh, semi milled or wholly milled rice with the HS code 10630. Now you can see here again, the export potential value is 14 billion US dollars, actual exports as 7.4 billion US dollars, and the unrealized uh, potential is 6.1 billion US dollars. Now, these numbers are a five year weighted averages, so don't be shocked if you see a little different numbers in the trade map, for example. Now, just quickly, I want to show you how you can uh, play with the tool more. Of course, you can navigate it to your heart's desire. You can also select it. Well, now with top five, we don't really see. Let's get to top, whoop, top 19. You can also select it um, sorted by actual exports or by expert potential. And you can also sort it by a potential to exports gap. You can also download the graph or um, share it, embed it. And right below, you can see key findings. So again, as we have just figured the top um, product with the greatest expert potential for India here is worked diamonds followed by medicaments and uh, more. So yes, um, we will be focusing on, on this product, semi-milled or wholly milled rice. Now, now we have our product. What do we do next? Let me get back to the PowerPoint and show you. No, actually, let me not do that. <laughs> let us first um, see how well you have been paying attention. I have a really, really quick question for you, and then you can answer. Uh, you can answer the the poll and uh, ask me any uh, questions that you have. Uh, Huang, would you be so kind as to launch the first poll for us, please? Yes. So I'll just go back to home and search page and I will search for the result as soon as we are done. So you're not left alone. Now, can you please uh, go to expert potential map and uh, Huang, can you please paste the link in chat? This is expertpotential.interest.org. And uh, answer two very, very, very easy questions. What is the product exported by Cameroon with the most expert potential? Is it cocoa beans? Is it fresh and dried bananas or is it cotton? And then it's just two, three mouse, mouse clicks away. Uh, can you please answer what is the amount of unrealized or untapped expert potential for aluminum? Uh, HS code 760110 exported by Cameroon. Now to answer the first question, you will have to just scroll down the page and select Cameroon here in the countries. And as you click here, you will see already in the big, big rectangle, the top uh, product with the most expert potential according to our calculations. And then you'll just have to hover over and find aluminum as one of the top products uh, exported by Cameroon and tell me the amount of untapped potential for that product. 
Now I don't click now because it just gives the answer straight away. I give you five more, 10 more seconds. An expert potential map, expertpotential.interest.org. Should have the link in the chat box. If not, it's very easy to find. Just scroll down the page, spot expert opportunities for Cameroon right here. And I hope you guys are not guessing. It's quite very easy to navigate. All right, cocoa beans are leading. I like how you're very positive with uh, the majority of you answering 40, 499 bill, uh, million US dollars. Now let's see if that's true. Two more seconds. I believe in you. All right, I'm gonna aim, end the poll now and share the results with you. So the majority of you answered cocoa beans. Now let's see if that's true. And uh, for the second question, uh, just real quick, you said the amount of unrealized on top expert potential, well, the majority said 499 million US dollars, uh, seconded by 95 million US dollars, and then 62 million US dollars. Now uh, let's see if that is true. So I clicked on Cameroon here as exporter. Then you click on export products. And right here, the top right yellow orange, <laughs> very vibrant cocoa beans is number one product with expert potential for Cameroon, uh, having 1.1 bil uh, billion US dollars of expert potential and around half a million dollars of unrealized expert potential, very prominent product. And here, bright and yellow, we have our aluminum uh, with the HS code 7601 and 10. We can see here uh, that uh, the expert potential is 95 million US dollars and unrealized is 62 million US dollars, which is still quite a lot. So good job, you guys, whoever participated. I really appreciate that. Now, do you have any questions that Hong has not been able to answer in the chat or shall I go on with another tool? Hong, let me know. Yeah, actually so far, no questions. Um, so far so good. So there's only one participant asking that um, they actually deal with HS code 61 and 62. So I understand that this is uh, about the concerning uh, another product. So I would suggest um, the person to go and explore our export potential map and um, yeah, follow the the steps that Adelia just uh, presented. And I believe that you will find the information that you need. Yes, Thanks. correct. Thank you so much for doing that. You're uh, holding up the front for all of us uh, here with the questions. Thank you guys for asking the questions as well. It means that you're interested in our tools. Um, so yes, you can play with the tool uh, to your heart's content. Again, it's free for all the developing countries and uh, the EU. Um, and to, to access the tools, you don't even need to register. But I do strongly encourage you to, to do so. All right, now let's hop uh, back uh, into the presentation with a little bit of more uh, theory. All right, so now we have our product, right? We have identified the top prominent ones and the most, and the one we want to focus on. We want to focus on the agri. We want to uh, export our semi-milled or milled rice from India. We have the HS code 10.06.30. Now I know it by heart. Um, and uh, we want to now see uh, what are the trade statistics. Do we have, um, what? who are the main uh, importers of our product in the world? Who are the main exporters of our products in the world? What is our competition? Uh, have there been gaining market share? Has there been, have there been losing market share? Is there an, an opportune moment for us to get in the market? What is, are the markets concentrated? Is there a lot of competition as well in the importing markets? Do they export from just one or two or are they open to a large um, pool of exporters? 
Now, many of you already know this is our um, oldest uh, tool, trade map. And now it helps us analyze uh, global trade flows based on the largest trade flow database uh, in the world. So here you have graphs, tables, maps with expert potential, uh, expert performance, international demand, markets, uh, competitions for many, many countries and many, many products. Now, more in the details on that, we have trade statistics for over 220 countries and territories. We have data from non-reporting countries as well that we calculate using the mirror data that, and I will tell, uh, tell you more about it in a second. We have, uh, for the harmonized system, we have over 5,300 products at the six digit, uh, our favorite six digit HS uh, level. For the national tariff line, so more detailed, eight, 10 and more digits, we have it for over 180 countries uh, and up to 10,000 pro 10, products. And here we source the data from national authorities. So we mostly work with customs directly, customs offices in uh, all over the world. For those who uh, are kind enough to share the data with us. Uh, we also work with the UN Comtrade, so United Nations Statistics Division. And uh, we have also company data. So uh, information on the importers and exporters of selected product or product groups from two databases currently, Compass and Dunn and Bradstreet. So all the companies listed there are courtesy of these databases. Now, trade map helps us answer quite several questions. For example, what is the level of global market demand for my product? Who are the fastest growing markets in the world? What are the main exporting and importing countries in the world and for my product? Uh, which companies import my product in a specific market? What are the potential business contacts? Um, and what is the most interesting market for my product? And many, many more. Now, if you have ever used trade map, um, you will see, well, you are familiar with those uh, tables with a lot of useful data. Now, it's um, all color, color coordinated. So all the values that you see in purple is the world value that applies to uh, all reporting and non-reporting countries as a world aggregation. Everything you see in red is a negative trade balance for the product. It comes with a minus sign as well. Now, this means that the country has been importing much more than it has been exporting. Now, everything in yellow is mirror data. Everything in bright green is quantities estimated by UNSD, Statistics Division of the UN, and everything in green is values estimated by us. Now, what are the mirror statistics and what do we do with it? So, quick example. We have here an Australia. An Australia. Australia. It is a reporting country. We have direct data from it. And here uh, in this example, we want to see the trade between Australia and Iraq. So Iraq is a non-reporting country. So for all the trade between Australia and Iraq, we will have to rely on the data reported by Australia. So all the data will be in yellow, AKA the mirror data. So uh, in case of trade between Iraq and Turkmenistan, so here, Iraq is a non-reporting country and Turkmenistan is also a non-reporting country. So for any trade between these two countries, we will not be able to compute or get any data, unfortunately, because none of them reported. But then again, uh, if there is any trade between Australia and Turkmenistan, uh, we will be able to compute it using the mirror data based on the data reported by Australia, the reporting country. But please be wary, all the statistics don't come without limitations. Of course, there are uh, slight margins of errors that are present everywhere. Um, as we know, uh, we uh, compute exports by using free FOB, free on board, and uh, the imports by using CIF or cost and insurance freight according to the INCO terms. Now, everything that is uh, on top of the price of the product, which is transportation and insurance costs, 
for uh, data for import data reported might be different. So in case you have one reporting and one non-reporting country, and for one of them who's using mirror statistics, uh, you might see difference in the numbers because of this um, transportation and insurance cost because of this um, margin. That's not, um, is not uh, possible to compute because one of the countries is not reporting. Now, real quick about trade indicators. I believe this is an example of Swiss chocolate. Uh, you can see here uh, in the table, first six uh, columns are a uh, size of the market. So you can see here in the very top one. So by default, when you have a search, um, it will be sorted by, um, from biggest to the lowest by the exported value. Uh, then you have the trade balance, oh, again, for the last available reporting year. So here it will be 2021. Then you have trade balance and it's all in thousands of US dollars. And we use the UN exchange rate. If you want to check it out, you can Google uh, anytime. And we, we also have a reference a page on trade map and data source page on trade map that you can study if you want to know more about where the data comes from and um, uh, frequency of the update of the data as well. Uh, then you have a share of uh, the country's exports in the world and then in each of those markets, share of the partners imports of that product uh, from you from the exporter, in this case, it's Switzerland. Uh, the quantity exported in 2021, usually it comes in tons. So next is the quantity unit. Next indicator is the unit value. Again, um, unit value is not the price, so be wary of that. And uh, then you have growth indicators. So you have growth in exported a value in between 2017 and 2021. And then you have growth in exported quantity in the same time period. And you have other indicators, for instance, ranking of the partner countries in all the world's imports, share of partner countries in the world's imports, total growth, um, again, to see if, if they have been gaining a market share or not, and average distance, but um, this is, not distance between the two countries. This is an average distance between the partner country. For example, here you see Germany on the first row and uh, distance between this country and all of their supplying markets on average. And then you see the concentration of supplying countries, uh, partner countries, and that I'm going to cover in a bit. And then uh, something that uh, we cross-reference from uh, the expert potential map. So some, for some of our tools, we do have cross-referencing information, but I suggest you uh, focus on the first, um, um, on, on the trade indicators in this example. And now if you want to see more, or if you don't want to see some of those, you can click on select your indicators and just sort it uh, the way you want to add or remove anything uh, as you would like. Now, really quickly about the market concentration. So here we use the Herfindel index. It is a tool to measure market concentration, product or market diversification. So it's very uh, quite simple. Um, the index ranges from one to zero, where one is, uh, where both are very unrealistic scenarios. Uh, but with one is the country has only one supplier and nobody else. So the market is highly monopolized, we can say. And zero when there are many suppliers uh, and each with a very small market share. So as a rule of thumb, we are saying that if it's less than 0.1%, the market is very diversified. If it's between 0.1 and 0.18, it's moderately concentrated. And if it's more than 0.18, we tend to say it is highly concentrated. Now, without further ado, let's go live real quick. And uh, let me show you the trade map. Now, Okay. 
here is the trade map tool, uh, trademap.org, very easy and simple. It is available in English, French, Spanish, Arabic, and Russian. Uh, and on the top of the screen here, you have the home and search page. Whenever you're not sure about your search, sometimes the, uh, the website, the cache, remembers your previous searches and it gives you um, uh, previous results. So just to be on the safe side, click on the home and search page and you'll be redirected back to this one. You have the data availability uh, tab where you can see uh, availability of data for uh, those um, indicators. You have reference materials, you have a user guide, FAQ, where you have a lot of uh, your potential questions answered. You have the glossary, the correspondence of the HS code, something I showed you in the very beginning. Oops and um, that I strongly encourage you to check every time you are not sure if your country, uh, if your product code has been changed, removed, upgraded, and so on and so forth, and data sources page to see where we uh, source the data from. Link to all of our wonderful other tools and uh, more. Now, uh, let's... Uh, okay, another thing, um, here you can see I am logged in, but uh, if, in order to access TradeMap in its full glory, I do suggest and strongly encourage you actually to have an account with us to be able to access these indicators and uh, company data and be able to uh, have um, country and product groups created. <laughs> Now, I already know here my product code for my semi-milled or milled rice, but if you don't, you can use an advanced uh, or just a product search. For example, here, if I put milled rice, it will give me my product code really easily. But if I'm not sure, uh, it is always good to, to, to use an advanced search. What does it give us? Well, it shows us if you click here at tariff line level, so it searches by the keyword. For example, here I put um, milled rice. And at tariff line level, again, um, these will be codes at more than six digit level. But as you remember, they will all be, um, if you see many similar, um, product codes at the country level, the first six digits will be your product code. So if you're unsure, um, you can use the advanced search tool and search by tariff line level and by keyword. For example, here you can see that many, many countries use this product code. Uh, and at the six digit level, it's the same code. 10.06.30s are semi-milled or milled rice. And uh, here you can see that India actually has um, a national tariff line level is 100630010, uh, which is semi-milled or wholly milled rice where they're not polished or glazed, uh, parboiled. So it breaks down our rice on a national level uh, to different kinds. And so you can see across all of these markets, we have our semi-milled or wholly milled rice at the six digit level. Now let's go back to the home and search page. All right, so let us see now what is our competition for the exports of our rice. Now I can put our HS product code on the six digit level, and I want to see uh, the export. So always make sure when you make a search that you select the correct things you want to look at. So here, if I click exports and I want to see the trade indicators, I just do so, and here it brings me a beautiful table. Now, always try to make sure that you have all your search uh, correct. We can just double check. We have our product here, 100630, semi-milled whole milled rice. Uh, we are currently looking at, at the world as a whole, and we have not selected any partner countries because we want to select um, export. Uh, all to see all the exporters, so all our competition. 
uh, we are now looking at exports and uh, trade indicators. Uh, so in trade map, you can also see yearly time series, quarterly and monthly time series, and uh, all the companies. And you can also see results by country, by product, by um, many, many things. And on the top of the page, you see uh, what you've been looking for. Uh, it is a list of exporters, all of the exporters for the selected product for 2021. And the selected product is 10.0630 RICE. Now you can see here <clears throat> that India actually has no competition in this regard. India has been the world's top exporter of this uh, semi-milled or milled rice in the past year. Again, as I said, it is sorted by the exported value right here. So although, and this, it's in thousands US dollars. So in total, uh, the world exported 21 billion, 818 million, 242,000 um, of uh, US dollars of this, um, of value of this product. Now, uh, second largest uh, exporter here is Thailand. And then we have Vietnam, Pakistan, USA, China, Italy, Cambodia, Myanmar, Tanzania, and all. Uh, as you can see here, China has a negative trade balance. We see the second column here, which means again that China has uh, imported much more of this product than it has in exported, hence the negative number in red. So, uh, here you can see uh, no quantity, which means that the quantities have not been uh, the quantities exported have not been reported uh, by Vietnam, so it is um, impossible for us to uh, to uh, put an estimation here regarding the tons exported the last year. Here, if you scroll down the page, you can see the same for um, Spain, for example. And uh, on the top of the page, if you don't see all the countries you need, you can also uh, change the amount of rows per page. You can select 200 or 300 if you'd like. So uh, here you can see, uh, for example, um, for India, the unit value in uh, um, the unit value in US dollars per unit, uh, but uh, be wary of uh, the following that unit value here is not an indicator of the price. Um, why? Because uh, HS6, uh, as it's been reported, is a very, very broad category. It can include um, much more, as we've just seen while using the advanced product search, a uh, much more categories within. And um, some of those, some of those uh, products can be of much higher price. Some of them can be at the lower end. So um, it varies in quality in price. So it is not indicative. This unit value indicator are not indicative of the market price of the product. So bear that in mind. Uh, however, you can use it, uh, use this indicator, uh, for example, um, if the unit value is increasing over time uh, to see if the country has started to export more high-end products. In our case, uh, maybe there is a bio-certified, as we've seen, um, bio-certified product, which are usually uh, more expensive, but also more demanded by certain markets, for instance, in Europe um, or uh, United States. Um, so you can use it as an indicator, but do not use it as um, as a set in stone uh, market price of the product. Now, um, for the annual growth in value and quantity and the value for the two years, here you can see actually, and you can compare 
the volatility of uh, the uh, value of the product in the past years. Uh, for example, here for rice uh, in, in the world, the annual growth in value has been uh, pretty low in the past uh, five years. Uh, however, uh, the annual growth in quantity has been uh, a little higher, um, which uh, in the in the same over the same time period of the past five years, which might mean uh, that uh, milled rice possibly in the past five years has became a little a little cheaper on the global level, right? And but however, growth in the uh, past uh, of the past uh, year past couple of years has increased by 6%. And perhaps this is uh, also due to, because rice is um, um, an agri-food commodity, uh, perhaps it's due to coronavirus pandemic uh, or the um, current geopolitical uh, events. So, uh, however, uh, next, if we look in the share in the world exports, uh, India has still a really high, uh, um, a, a really big share. So it's one of the really top exporters of uh, milled rice. And here on in these indicators, if we go back, it is ha it has a quite a fast uh, growth rate higher than the world average. So it means that it's gaining uh, market share in the world, which is a really good indicator for us, exporters of milled rice in this particular example. So um, compared to, for example, it's second, uh, compared to the second largest exporter of this product, Thailand, it has been doing a pretty good. And you see here, Thailand has been losing market share. However, here you can see lower that Myanmar has also been very, very prominent. Uh, the growth rate in between 2020 uh, in value between 2020 and 2022 um, has been 421%, so it skyrocketed. And uh, followed by Tanzania as well, that has shown very, um, very interesting results here. So now we have looked at all the exporters, all our competition for this product. Now let's look at the importers of our product. Just click here. On top of the page, we change export to import. Yes, I'm almost done. <laughs> Kong is sending me reminders. Thank you so much for that. Um, so we see all the top importers of our product in 2021. And you see here that uh, top importer has been China. And uh, not surprising, it has been importing quite a lot. Uh, so uh, more than a billion uh, US dollars worth of rice in the last available year, followed by Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Bangladesh, USA, Iraq, Iran, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, and so on and so forth. So, yes, you can see here, most of them have negative trade balance, which means that uh, they um, has been importing more than they have been exporting. And as you can see here for Bangladesh, the uh, values are in yellow, which means that Bangladesh has not reported uh, data about this product to us. And this has been computed using mirror data, if you remember, based on the reporting countries, based on the bilateral trade statistics that they, that they have um, provided to us. Now, let's see actually a last thing, last but not the least, what are our, our actual importers of our milled rice? So we go again on top of the page and we click uh, select India as uh, the market and right now the graph has generated um, a list of supplying markets for India because so all the uh, imports of India of this product 
And you see here, not much because India is a top exporter. Now, what we need to do is again to double check what we're looking at and click exports here to see uh, the following. We want to see all the importing markets uh, for uh, the product. So our semi-milled, fully milled rice exported by India in 2021. Now, if you read the title, it already tells you a lot of useful information. So let's do that. You can see that again, India exports represent 38.3% in the global market and India is the world's number one exporter of this rice. The average distance between importing countries is above 5,000 kilometers. Again, this is an average between all of their suppliers. So uh, we will not really emphasize on that. And you can see that export concentration is 0.04%, which means that the market is quite diversified. And right below, you can see all our top um, Top importing markets. So number one importer of our semi-milled rice from India uh, in the last available year here again it's sorted by the values is Bangladesh followed by Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Benin, United Arab Emirates, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea, Nepal, Yemen uh, and here you can see all the top markets. Now they all import imported quite a lot in uh, in the past year. And uh, you can also look and play with all these indicators as you wish. Again, if you want to remove some, you can just click here. And uh, uh, if you're seeing too many that you're not interested in, you can just remove them or add extra as you, as you wish. And um, Second. Uh, and yes, um, just looking here at the concentration of the markets, whereas the export concentration of India is quite diversified, so it exports to all over the world. Um, you can see that its top importing markets are quite concentrated. So they probably just work with a few countries that supply this milled rice to them because this concentration indicator is more than 0 0.18. And so uh, for us to just quickly look at the most interesting market already from the get-go from the trade map, we can look into, on top of the exported value, of course, where Bangladesh is the uh, top leader followed by um, all of these uh, countries. You can see the growth uh, rate, right, this column, all these growth indicators we're interested in. You can see here that uh, Vietnam has been showing really, really interesting results for over a thousand four hundred uh, percent in growth and exported value uh, between 2020 and 2022, which might point us at uh, Vietnam as one of the interesting markets. However, you can see here that Cameroon has been also um, a growing and exported uh, in the value and uh, Madagascar and uh, all the other. Uh, wonderful market. So this is just to say that uh, you can um, you can learn so much from this uh, great tool and analyze it uh, in your own way, probably not following exactly what I've just showed you, but uh, it gives you already some pointers. Uh, again, you can use, um, in order to have a more graphic description of it, you can use the graphs here. So the system will generate graphs for you. Um, for example, this wonderful bubble graph, or I also like the bar charts on the exported value that just, just gives you a really simple indication. For example, here you see importing markets for Indian uh, milled rice in 2021, again, Bangladesh number one, and uh, hovering over you have also the exported value shown to you. You can also create maps and, uh, and much more. So, uh, Unfortunately, we don't have much time to explore the tool, but um, uh, 
you do have a couple of minutes now for uh, another poll. Uh, I hope you have been paying attention. Um, so I will kindly ask Huang to yeah, Please. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry for interrupting, but yes. I think before we go into the polls, there's one question from Mr. Jay Sen um, that I find sure. interesting. Maybe you address it like publicly so people can understand if they find um, similar uh, mist, uh, like similar uh, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So he asked about when he searched for data for a specific uh, HS code, um, that data import data of uh, one country uh, from the world. Um, for example, like he he said from United uh, Arab Emirates import from the world, and then he saw a, a certain value being imported from India. But when the other way around, he searched for um, using export of India from um, United uh, Arab Emirates, and he saw different value, and he he asked why. All right, that's very interesting. Maybe it depends on how the country reported the, the data uh, yeah. to us. Yeah, yeah, because I, I I think this question will, I mean, actually, to answer this question, maybe there you, you might talk about like a mirror data or a direct reported data. So I think it will be interesting to address that. So I leave it to you. Um, yeah. Is it clear the question? Uh, Yes, I think I got the I got the gist of it. So I think it's due to uh, I mean, if you see the numbers in yellow, then it's highly highly likely that the data is mirror data. So it's reported based on uh, not what the country, the selected country, um, has uh, provided to us, but based on uh, the partner country that it's been trading with, hence the difference. Um, and actually, in TradeMap, you can also search uh, for uh, not only direct data, but mirror data if you're unsure of the results. Um, so I hope that has been clear. If if there is, if it's a, a data issue and there is really a big error or bug, um, I strongly suggest you to contact our team. We're super, super responsive. Where my colleagues that actually work on TradeMap. I will be able to answer it to you or fix something that is um, out of order. Uh, it's very possible that there are also some updates on the system. So, um, so yeah, uh, please don't hesitate. I, I don't know if you, if Juan can paste a, link, uh, a uh, market analysis uh, email in the chat box. Um, I will also mention it at the end so you can contact us at any time. Um, so, yeah, if there is a really specific data issue, um, you might want to address it to my colleagues that take care of it. So I hope I have been able to answer it. If not, you also have a question and answer session at the end. Um, if you still have extra questions that Hong hasn't been able to reply to, don't hesitate. But uh, for the sake of time, um, I really want you to actually use our tool. Uh, a little more and see if you've been paying attention. So yes, thank you so much, Kong. Um, if you uh, are um, going to trademap.org, the website, the link is just uh, right below. If you go to trademap.org and you search for Sri Lanka's um, import, uh, Sri Lanka's export of black tea in small packages, 090230, can you please tell me what is its top importing market in value? And a follow up question, uh, very simple, you see it on the same page. What is Sri Lanka's ranking in the world's? export of this product. Now, uh, the top importing market of black tea in small packages from Sri Lanka, is it United Arab Emirates, is it Iraq, or is it Jordan? And uh, is uh, what is Sri Lanka's ranking in the world's export? Is Sri Lanka number one exporter of this black tea in small packages? Is it the second or is it the tenth? Now, I hope you guys are not guessing. It's quite simple and easy. 
if you have an account with ITC, TradeMap does uh, require you, as well, strongly encourage you to have it to navigate better. So you go to trademap.org and then you're looking at uh, Sri Lanka as an exporter. So you click, make sure you select exports and then the very top uh, bar here, you put the HS code that we already know, 0902, oops, now you see, it did remember my previous search for my Indian rice. Now you, in the top bar here, you put 090230, black fermented tea, and in the country, you put Sri Lanka, right here. So right now we want to see top importer, so there is no specific partner to select in this column. And then we want to click on trade indicators. And once we click on trade indicators, the, the table will just show you the answer to your first and the second question as well. Okay, I'll give you a couple more seconds. See the majority of you has gotten it right. Very well done. All right, we have a draw here. Half of you think it's United Arab Emirates and half of you think it's Iraq, the top importing markets for this black tea from Sri Lanka. And the majority of you are quite correct. Sri Lanka is number one exporter of this black tea. Here I'm sharing the results. And now let's see how we find it. So again, we go to trade map, the very home and search page. We want to see exports of uh, here we put our black fermented tea, we can put the product code, and we look at Sri Lanka here as an exporter again, and we click on trade indicators, and that will let us see. First things first, already on the, the, the answer is already in the heading, answer to the second question, so Sri Lanka is number one world exporter of this tea, and if you scroll just a little bit lower, you see number one importer is Iraq here with a um, value of 80 a million nine hundred thirty-five thousand U.S. dollars uh, imported in 2021 from Sri Lanka. So those of you answered Iraq, very well done. Um, don't get discouraged. United Arab Emirates does still export quite a lot. Um, and uh, most of you answered that it is the top exporter and uh, Sri Lanka is a top exporter of this black tea. And it's a very correct. Now, very well done. So we've looked at those markets. We've looked at the competitors. We've looked at the top importers, the market share, the concentration. Now, what is left to do? to see what is the cost to enter the market. What are the tariffs and the regulations and requirements an exporter has to face while tackling a new horizon, a new market. Now, market access map is the right tool for that. Market access map helps us analyze market access conditions applied to your products, compare them to conditions applied to competitors. MacMap.org, the website's pretty simple. Now, the characteristics, it's showing you data for over 200 countries. We have most favored nations, other tariffs, we have tariff rate quotas for over um, of the 84 countries, information, trade agreements, information of the rules of origin uh, that um, a company might need to um, consider in order to benefit from a certain preferential trade agreement, um, ad valorem equivalent for non-ad valorem tariffs. Uh, so we calculate an equivalent of a really complex tariff and we show it in percentage. So you will see that quite a lot, ad valorem value. So this is just our calculation and estimation of the tariff for your, for the ease of reference, basically. 
So we also have import export requirements. We also call them uh, non-tariff measures. So this is again, all of the measures on top of the tariffs that an exporter might need to consider. And as I've already mentioned, it sometimes for businesses, it can be quite um, burdensome to comply with those, whereas a tariff might be very low or zero percent, for example, preferential rate between several partner countries. Uh, there can be a lot of requirements that um, are in place for a reason. They protect uh, the industry. They are mostly health and safety um, concerns, so SPS measures, as we call them, or technical barriers to trade, something to protect the local market. So uh, they exist for a reason, but sometimes they can be quite, uh, they can look quite um, overwhelming uh, for some. And we source uh, data from national authorities. So we work a lot with the customs. Again, uh, UNCTAD, we collect those non-tariff measures ourselves and also uh, some of them are collected by UNCTAD and because they sometimes are really really hard to collect it takes a lot of time on top of that legislation is changing um, sometimes you see data um, from several years ago but we do try to update it as uh, soon as physically possible we also source data from the world bank and other partners now Market access map helps us answer the following questions. What is the best market for my product? What are the competitors? Do they have any competitive advantage? Um, what are the tariffs that are applied to their products? Do they have any benefits? Which products shall my country focus on? And what are the trade agreements I can benefit from? And many, many more. Now, really, I will even almost skip through the theory. We all know what the custom tariffs are. They're tax duty levied by governments, mostly on the imported goods, levied on the time of importation in the country. Now, again, there is many, many different types of tariffs. And uh, for example, ad valorem ones, which is just a percentage on the value of the product. Uh, there are tariff rate quotas that are sometimes applied to certain um, <clears throat> products. Um, and all the non ad valorem tariffs, the compound, mix, technical, very, very complex ones. And we did simplify it, uh, them for you using ad valorem equivalent. How do we calculate it? Again, it is a percentage, the basic formula, specific tariff, and unit value are taken into consideration. So again, uh, tariffs and trade agreements, trade map features those. Rules of origin facilitator looks even more deep, deeper in the detail on the trade agreements where you can compare them and you can see which rules of origin um, <clears throat> apply and you see uh, you can read much more in detail on that. But market access map does cover quite a substantial amount of that information. So again, uh, we all know there is a general tariff applied to all of the countries. Then there is a, uh, there could be a most favored nation tariff that is available to all the WTO members. Uh, so this is usually a uni universal unified tariff. And now uh, many countries and partner country groups have um, included different agreements such as non-reciprocal for example there's a lot of eu agreements with developing and developed um, with developing and least developed countries in order to uh, facilitate uh, their uh, exports and uh, facilitate the trade and there are also um, bilateral and regional trade agreements for example cfta cis agreements between the countries or just bilateral agreements from one country to another uh, in order to uh, facilitate the trade. Now, enough uh, theory. Let's quickly go to the market access map where I can show you more. Now, the market access map. Here, again, I'll just zoom it in a little bit for you. And the market access map is available in English, French, Spanish, Russian, and uh, Arabic. I believe. Um, here uh, you can analyze it. In, you can analyze um, the market access conditions in many, many ways. 
you can go to access, you can see customs tariffs applied, you can see if there are any trade remedies, if there are any requirements in export and imports, you can compare markets, you can compare your competitors, compare your products, you can analyze agreements, GTAP tariffs, graphs, and you can also download all of that information. Now we also have information on the temporary measures. We have been monitoring them very closely, uh, the COVID pandemic uh, one. Uh, the current update, I believe, is fall 2022. Now there is much less, uh, less and less measures in place, so this uh, is not as relevant. However, this uh, new section related to um, the current geopolitical events between Russia and Ukraine, uh, this uh, contains a lot of temporary measures that we try to keep up with as we go. So you might want to check it out, it's a very useful source. Now again, you can read more about the methodology, availability of the data, and read more on the original trade agreements as our new uh, addition to the portal, read about Inca terms, and much more. Now, uh, on the very uh, first page that opens up to you when you uh, put MacMap in the Google search, you have this uh, market access conditions search. So uh, this one is very useful if you already have your exporting country, you already have your destination country and the product code. Now, if you click on the search here, it will just give you all the information of the current tariff applies, tra uh, preferential tariffs if there are any, uh, if there are any trade remedies, and uh, it will give you information on the um, non-tariff measures or all the other um, measures applied by the destination market to your product and generally uh, to your country, to your product, and generally to all the countries in, as a whole. Now, let's imagine we don't yet have our uh, importing markets. Let's compare what are the costs to enter those. So we go to compare markets. And we have already our exporting country. Of course, here we have India. Now, as a default, because we compare all the access uh, market access conditions across all, of, all over the globe, uh, destination country will be marked as all. Sorry, I cannot zoom in, it doesn't let me. Um, and uh, you can put the, the product code that you already uh, have. Here we have our rights. And we click on the search, of course. Now let's see what are the aggregated market access indicators for our semi-milled or wholly milled rice exported from India. Now here you can see uh, the, uh, the uh, indicators. By default, they are sorted by alphabetical order um, of uh, the country names. So um, here you can see first the MFN, so most favored nation tariffs applied to these countries. Then you can see the effectively applied tariffs. Now here uh, you see if there are any preferential trade agreements uh, that are applied between India and the selected countries. Um, the, if you click on one of those, the table will uh, shift the sorting. So for example, here, if I click on MFN, uh, you can see that Korea actually applies the highest tariff to the uh, rice um, that we're working with from India of 513%, uh, followed by Taipei, uh, Japan, Burundi, and Tanzania. So uh, these countries are not very welcoming to our uh, wholly milled or semi-milled rice from India. Now, if you click here on the effectively applied tariff, uh, you can see here that it, the table has changed the sorting. Now, again, if I click again, it will be uh, because there are no preferential agreements. Um, obviously, <laughs> if the Korea doesn't really want our product, um, uh, it will be very, very high. However, if you click again, it will sort from uh, bottom to the top. 
Now you can see here that whereas there is a high MFN tariff applied by Vietnam, the effectively applied tariff is 0%. So there is a preferential trade agreement between these countries. So an exporter might actually benefit from that. And here you can see also Bhutan, despite 10% MFN tariff, there is a 0% applied tariff. So uh, we might look into those markets concerning the tariffs. Now, the preferential margin here tells you by how much you have an advantage. So here, uh, because the MFN tariff for Vietnam is so high uh, and effectively applied tariff is zero, you can say that you benefit uh, by 40 percent by um, uh, using by uh, exporting to Vietnam using this preferential trade agreement. That is, if you comply with the rules of origin, um, of uh, the uh, importing, uh, sorry, <laughs> if you comply with the rules of origin under the preferential trade agreement. Now here you can see, you can also here select by import value. Um, and uh, you can see here Bangladesh and Saudi Arabia are the top leaders as we've seen on the, on the trade map. So you can really play as much as you want with this indicators. Again, you can also show or hide columns. So select those you're interested in or remove those you find uh, unnecessary for your current search. And you can also see that the graph, uh, the data in different graphs, uh, very, very uh, nice, beautiful maps as well. I really like to use those for my presentations. So you see here the trade and thousands, all the indicators. Now, if we go back to the table, just real quick. Um, here you can see uh, the amount of national tariff lines. So again, here the, the tariffs are, um, uh, because the tariffs apply on the national tariff line level of the product, so beyond the HS6 code, we have to uh, make an estimate using the average. For example, here you see that uh, to trade with Germany, uh, there is 72 national tariff line level within the uh, HS6 code. So uh, on average, uh, the tariff applied, because there is no agreement, is 20.46%. However, uh, some, uh, if you're, for example, the rice, um, as we've just seen, there can be parboiled rice, um, just dried rice, uh, the tariff applied can differ significantly. So bear in mind that this uh, indicator um, in case there is a lot of national tariff lines is just an average of those. So the, um, uh, the tariffs can vary significantly. Now, if we click here again, um, oop, if we sort here by the import value, um, we can see that, uh, for example, one of the top importers, Saudi Arabia here for us could be a very interesting market because we have 0% um, effectively applied rate. Uh, but on top of that, um, as we've seen previously, for example, Vietnam here, um, as it's also gaining um, really significantly the market shares we've remembered from the trade map, uh, we have very good tariff advantage also uh, exporting to Vietnam. So let's quickly click here and uh, I'm almost done with this section. I know I'm running a little bit over time, but I hope you're uh, bearing with me here. I still have one more really, really cool tool to share with you. Uh, so yes, uh, this is the same result as you get from the very home page when you already know your uh, exporter, your destination country here, we've selected Vietnam and your product code that you type in here. Uh, here you see that uh, at the tariff line level, um, our semi-milled or wholly milled rice breaks down into further categories. And uh, depending on the category, uh, the I'm sorry for the screen uh, running around. Uh, depending on the category, you have different tariffs applied. Now here, for in this example, it does not change, but uh, sometimes the tariffs vary uh, significantly.
Now let's imagine we love, or we we do love <laughs> purple dress, but we also do export purple dress. So for the sake of this exercise, let's select that. And uh, here you can see um, all the information you need to consider. Uh, the MFN duties, there is a 40% applied tariff. Um, this is an ad valorem equivalent that we have calculated. And now if you don't know, uh, if you need to know more about the indicator, you can always hover over the little I I icon for metadata. And uh, if you click here on the trade agreement details, you will see that there is a preferential tariff for India FTA uh, with ASEAN, uh, between ASEAN countries and India. And you can read more about the agreement. And if you want to click through the rules of origin uh, or to check the certificate of origin, you are very free to do so. Now, these are usually collected uh, in the language of the signing, uh, one of the languages of the signing country. So that, that um, bear that in mind as well. And I have information on the member states of the ASEAN. Um, you see that there are no trade remedies applied for this product. And you can see here uh, that there is, uh, though, quite some regulatory requirements that we have collected. You can see the source of data is in CTAD. It's been collected in 2018 using HS17 revision. So all the information is in the name of the graph. Um, and you can see here that the total is 48 measures here for the import requirements to the product. However, at our destination market, <clears throat> which is Vietnam in this case, does apply still seven measures to all the goods, uh, no matter the um, no matter the HS code. And you can see here if you want to read more about the measure, now get the most common are uh, safety SPS measures and technical uh, measures. Now, if you want to read more, uh, you're very free to do so. Uh, now they do get sometimes quite technical, so, but that does give you an, an indicator if, uh, if um, there is an overbearing amount of measures that despite the very low tariff, it might be quite hard for an exporter to comply with all of them. So you always have to um, keep those factors in mind. Now, um, do we have any questions or can we launch yet another poll before we jump into the very last section, but a very, very interesting one? Kong? No, actually, there was a following up question from uh, Mr. Zaysen about the discrepancies um, of data, but um, I already answered him in the chat. So Wonderful. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, yes, uh, so just uh, to not run too much over time, uh, may I ask you please to launch the poll for the Mac map to test yet again if you have been paying attention. All right, I've just launched the poll. Now you can go to macmap.org, very simple and easy. And I will give you just half a minute for this one because I do really want to share with you our final, final tool uh, that we're going to look at today. So uh, for the sake of the exercise, uh, I will ask you to please look into preferential tariff applied on export of Turkish shelled hazelnuts, so without the shell, uh, of the HS code 080 to 22 uh, to Germany. And uh, can you tell me how many regulatory requirements apply for the export of this product? Is it 11, is it 28, is it 31? And the preferential tariff, um, is it 0%, is it 3%, or is it 3.2%? Now, to answer this question, it's simple and easy. You go to macmap.org, of course, you go to homepage. Because you already know your exporter, your, import, your importing country, and your product code, you can just type that. So we are looking at Turkish, uh, Turkey. 
we click on Germany as the destination country and we select our shelled hazelnuts and we click on search. Magma.work, right from the start homepage, exporting country Turkey, destination country Germany, product 080222, shelled hazelnuts, and search. Right, you guys are doing very well. You're very active. I'm very proud of you. I know it's not easy to listen to me talk for that long, but thank you so much for your patience and interest and, act, and uh, participation in the polls. That shows me that you guys are really interested and uh, have not yet fallen asleep. All right, very, very good results. All right, let me just end all here and show you the results. All right, so if I click on the search from the get-go, I get all my answers. Now you have the MFN duties here, MFN tariff of 3.2%. However, we have a slight um, benefit here um, in terms of uh, calculate it in the ad valorem equivalent here. For the applied tariff, there is a little preferential agreement. So we do get that 0 0.12, 20% uh, of preferential margin. And uh, the amount of uh, export and import requirements here, we have 31, those who answered 31, which is the majority of you. Um, very well done. I'm very proud of you guys. All right, last but certainly not the least, tool I really wanted to show you guys is the Global Trade Help Desk. Now, if you already know your product as an exporter, we assume that is the case, right? And you want to see without going through from one tool to another, even though each and every one of them is extremely detailed and very useful if you want to get more in the details for trade map to see the trade flows, maybe seasonality, um, if you want to see the competition, who are the other exporters of your product? For MacMap, if you want to see more detailed information on what are the uh, preferential tariffs your competitors benefit from that we didn't look at today, but uh, I let you uh, play with the tool um, later on. An expert potential map, if you would like to see expert potential as a whole for your region uh, for the product, you do still need to use those tools. However, if you already know your market, if you already know your product and you want to see information for a specific destination or uh, explore the top uh, exporters with the highest export potential, Global Trade Help Desk got you covered because on top of that information, we have collected the cream of the crop from all of our other ITC tools and our partner organizations as well. And we have gathered together um, all of that information in a single one-stop shop called Global Trade Help Desk. Again, here we have information on trade map, from market access map, from sustainability map, all those voluntary uh, sustainability standards you might look into to target more niche markets. We have information from the EPING. We have um, information from uh, IATA, from WIPO, from all of our uh, partners and WTO, of course. So without further ado, uh, I will not get much on the theoretical part because it is built from all of the previous tools. So we already got the basics covered. So now let me just quickly go and do a quick demo for you. Now here we have our wonderful Global Trade Help Desk. Uh, on top you have uh, those um, temporary measures that you can check regarding uh, the current uh, events and uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, here you can see the home page, about page if you want to read more about us, uh, resources page. The website is available in English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, and Arabic. And uh, without further ado, let's quickly look in our opportunities. So let's imagine here, well, let's not imagine, 
let's check uh, how um, we can access all of that information for India. So I forgot the HS code. Can you believe that? Uh, all right, I remembered. I repeated it so much that I forgot it. So um, uh, we have our India as an exporter. We have our product as our semi-milled or wholly milled rice. And uh, let's imagine we don't yet know our um, ideal market. So uh, um, instead of just choosing one country of interest, we can click on find markets. And this is data coming from uh, expert potential map. And we can see all those countries with the top uh, a top performance in terms of expert potential according to our estimates so here uh, I suggest we try to focus on the United States of America where we have uh, almost five almost half a million uh, worth of US dollars of um, expert potential if we click on go now it gives you the global overview of all your opportunities. Now, if it wants, it loads. All right, so from the get-go, you have the market overview. So you see, oh, again, yeah, now it's more like it. So you see how attractive is the USA market as a global importer of your product. So this is all the data we have from trade map. We can see the total imports is um, uh, global total imports in the last available year is uh, almost a billion worth of US dollars um, generally uh, from all the world. It is number five. Uh, global importer of our uh, semi-milled or milled rice, our wholly milled rice. And uh, below we have the market perspective for India. Now, uh, the import share is 22%, which is quite still significant. There is a slight import growth over the past five years. You can see it's been growing slow but steady. Well, it, there was a little bit of a decline. Uh, I suggest uh, it might be due to the COVID pandemic or other factors. And here you see also information from our um, first tool we looked into, the expert potential map. You can see yet again, it's uh, almost, um, almost half a billion dollars worth of expert potential. Now, if you scroll below, you have information on the tariffs. What are the import tariffs uh, for the United States of America? Now, if you click here more, you can learn more about them. And uh, whereas there is 11.2% MFN duties, again, tariff are applied at the national tariff line level that you can see here. For the parboiled rice, the duties are high. However, if it is not parboiled, which is under HS code 1063090, the MFN duties are just 1.1% in ad valorem equivalent. So, if you're exporting rice in general and you want to know uh, which one is more, um, which one is cheaper in order to enter the market, maybe uh, non parboiled rice would be uh, your a product of choice to tackle a US market. Now, if we go back, you also here see the mandatory requirements, all these non tariff measures. Now, there is quite a bit. So the regulatory changes, this is sourced from the WTO. These are the changes uh, and additions to uh, the existing uh, regulatory requirements. You might look into that. This could just be the updates. And uh, so you see here the product requirements, market conditions and pre-shipment and inspection, all those different names for these non-tariff measures. Uh, so these are uh, all applied by the USA, the destination market. However, there is still 13 uh, requirements you have to comply as an Indian importer in India. Usually these are in place for quality control uh, to make sure your product uh, reaches a destination in its full glory. Now below you have the time and cost to export information. We are currently working on uh, updating that. So please disregard it. My colleagues are working on it as we speak. So bear with us. 
And lower here, you can also see very useful information regarding uh, the potential partners. So we have business directory. So the businesses that you can get in touch with, this is sourced from TradeMap directly. So you have to have a login to be able to access that. Uh, we have also information on trade finance providers, trade promotion organizations, IP offices, and freight forwarders. Information we have from our uh, partner, Ayata. Now, if you click here, you will just be redirected to another section. So for example, here, um, pardon me, on top of trade map uh, data that you can see when you scroll the page to the very bottom. If you click access here, you will be redirected to trade map and it will show you the company information uh, on based on different product categories. Um, you also have information from Connect Americas here, one of our other partner institutions. So if you click through here, you can see all the useful information. If you need any trade finance, we have local uh, providers, uh, local banks in India that you might get in touch with if you're interested. So trade promotion organizations, if you need any help with that and information on, on freight forwarders from one source. So uh, Global Trade Help Desk just simplifies uh, your market research process and um, has like, it's, it's serves as a one-stop shop really for you to quickly analyze uh, as a whole, is the market interesting for me to target or not? Uh, yet, of course, if you want really more detailed information on expert potential trade statistics or uh, trade agreements, do check our other portals as well. So um, we are um, a little bit over time, but thanks for those who still stuck around. I would still like to launch the final poll for you. Uh, Kuang, would you mind doing that? Please, or oh, no, actually I can do that. Great, so this is a really just one simple search to see if you guys have been paying attention. I promise this is the last one. So please bear with me. Uh, now here, I, I like how you're very, <laughs> how you're already guessing. Um, uh, you have to go to the globaltradehelpdesk.org, of course. Please check it out. Thank you, Kong, so much for your proactivity. Um, and uh, in the search bar, you can click on uh, Exporting Market uh, Canada. Nope, actually, that would be the Importing Market. Um, the question is, actually, as a coconut oil exporter from Philippines, would you be more tempted to uh, expand your experts to Korea or Canada. Now, in order to do so, you will need to launch two searches. Uh, doing that is very simple and easy. Uh, you click Philippines. You select Philippines from the exporter uh, list. You already have your HS uh, product code, which is 151319. Coconut palm and kernel oil and more. And you can already select here your destination market, for example, Canada, and click on go. Now I'm doing it as you're still voting for the poll for the sake of time. Um, again, you can see here that uh, Canada is top 10 importer, which is really good news. Um, it has a really large import share importing from Philippines, importing this coconut oil. However, the import growth has been uh, declining a little bit, yet there is still quite some export potential, 24.2 million, not too bad. There is a preferential agreement, that's very, very nice. Uh, and there is, well, quite some uh, non-tariff measures that you'd like to consider. So not too bad. Now let's uh, click here and we can just edit Canada to Korea.
And here you can see very, very nice results as well. So uh, it's number five in global imports of this coconut oil. It has a quite a large, even, though, even if it's a bit smaller uh, import share, but the import growth in the past five years has been almost 200%, which is incredible results. And uh, you have still quite a lot, even though it's a bit less, but still quite a lot of expert potential. And here you can see visually on the graph of the, the Korean ha market has been uh, skyrocketing here. And um, uh, here you can check as well if you have a preferential tariff and if there are any export and import requirements that you might want to also consider. All right, so very well done, you guys. Um, it's almost a tie. <laughs> uh, it's true, although sometimes the markets can be quite similar and, and uh, even though one might offer preferential uh, tariffs another, um, but have a lot of non-tariff measures or be very burdensome uh, to, 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 to target another, even if it might have a, a high tariff, maybe there is a lot of expert potential or it has been growing a lot recently. So it's still a very prominent want to look at. So these are all the factors you might need to consider. It's not all white and black, of course, as, as everything in life. So um, this is a, indeed a great tool to have a global overview of your opportunities. Now, one very, very, very last thing I promise, and then I will let you go. Um, I have seen in our registrations that a lot of you guys are uh, from ASEAN, 10 ASEAN member states. So just wanted to quickly let you know about a really uh, exciting program that we are working on uh, together with our partners from the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce and Google. It's called Digital Expert Enablement Program or DEEP. And it is uh, targeting 1,000 uh, MSMEs, so micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises from the 10 ASEAN markets. Now, this is an absolutely free of charge program for the businesses. Uh, this it aims to facilitate uh, cross-border trade. Um, it is. Uh, looking into uh, e-commerce, uh, it's looking into um, building your capacity uh, using our practical tools such as Global tr uh, Global Trade Help Desk, the one that we've just seen now, and Google's Market Finder tool. And there will be a series of trainings, workshops, and webinars uh, that you might want to uh, attend. And uh, this is a very very exciting program that uh, we're myself and my colleagues are working on. Again, it's absolutely free of charge. Uh, it is in English and local languages, selected local languages from the ASEAN member states. Uh, I, If you're one of the businesses from one of those countries, please do check it out if um, or apply by the end of March, by the end of this month. Now, I believe Kong can share the link in chat. Uh, amazing Kong. Very well done. So yes, it's a very, very exciting program that you might want to check out. Um, please do so. Now, won't take much more of your time, just last uh, bits. Uh, if you need more information or want to stay uh, up to date with our updates with um, or to learn uh, to learn more about our tools, or uh, want to see the video tutorials targeting specific um, specific uh, platforms, please do so. Uh, you can go to marketanalysis.interesand.org, the market analysis tools portal. Uh, if you have any uh, questions specifically about our tools, if you have any suggestions, or if you've seen any. Um, discrepancies. We're always working on improving these uh, portals for you. Please don't hesitate to write uh, to us uh, on uh, using market analysis at interest.org. We're also on Twitter. Uh, we post about our webinars also on Twitter and LinkedIn, so stay good. Um, we also have information on our updates and really cool user stats, so don't miss out on that. And uh, also please check out our, our YouTube channel, uh, Speaking Off. Uh, this webinar has uh, hopefully been recorded uh, and uh, we will uh, share with you the link to the recording for those of you who missed anything or for those of you who 
had to leave early. Uh, we will share with you the video recording and the slides that I have used uh, today. So thank you all so very much for bearing with me for these uh, couple hours. Um, I open the floor to any questions that Tuong hasn't been able to uh, reply or wanted to leave me to answer to the broader audience. So Actually, the, all the questions in the chat have been answered. I saw um, one participant raising their, her, their hand. Um, so maybe I will unmute you and so you can ask your, your question. Good morning, afternoon. <laughs> yes, Hello. we can hear you. <laughs> they can hear me. So I wanted to ask about the digital export enabling, enabling program, the DIP. We yes. are in Africa. Is the African countries also uh, included in that? Or can we also have something specific? the Africans. All right. Uh, unfortunately, a current version of the program is only focusing on the ASEAN member states, but I will mention it to our colleagues that if this one is a huge success, we will definitely also target African uh, countries. Thank you so much for your interest. Do we have any more questions? I understand um, I you guys are tired. <laughs> I understand you guys are um, absorbing all the new information and I'm very pleased that we've had really, really good um, participation from you and interest and all the questions. Thank you all so much uh, for um, being here with us today. I thank yeah. you so much, Pong. You've been a great support. My pleasure. So, um, I mean, in any case, if you have any questions, please don't forget that you can stay in touch with us uh, via email marketanalysis.account um, at theinterest.org um, and stay connected with us on our social media channels um, to get the most updated information from us. Um, I think maybe now, because we are running out of time, so I will give the floor to the last participant who raised her hand, please um, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, hi. Okay. I uh, just want to ask one question. Is the company data on trap map is valid? And can uh, I use the data for uh, get the buyers? Thank you. Could you please kindly repeat the first part of your question? Okay. Uh, is the company data on trade map uh, is valid? Is valid? Yes, um, that's a very good question. So uh, currently, we we work with Dun and Bradstreet and Compass. So all the data there uh, is a courtesy of these databases. So um, they update it as as they progress, but we unfortunately okay. cannot guarantee these are. Um, necessarily the businesses that are extremely active in the imports of the selected product. So uh, you might need to uh, double check that information, but okay. it does give you an indicator um, already of some businesses. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I think that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for being uh, here with us once again. Um, I think we can we can stop the recording and stop the webinar. Thank you.